Good morning, all. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Keith will be in here pretty soon. I'm going to run to another room real quick, and then I'll be right back. I'm going to walk.
good morning, folks, and begin us now the ritual in the year of our Lord 2021 of Can You Hear Me Okay? Hey, Keith. Yep, we can hear you. Fantastic. And you can't see me, which is, which is much to your benefit, but <laughs> let me fix that here. Hello. Oh. Ruth just ran to another room for a second. She said she'll be right back. So I've I, I've heard these words spoken before. <laughs> I've been made promises. Sold we'll see. Goods. <laughs> see where is the hostile takeover of meeting button? There is none. Okay. Okay, I believe I am now sharing the agenda. Yep. Up there, and that can that is visible. Excellent. Okay. Uh, the prodigal Ruth has returned. She came back. Uh, let me tell you about my trip. Just kidding. Go on. I went to the bathroom. Yeah, I was like, I don't know that I, I need to hear about your bathroom trip. There was a lady there. I wasn't real sure what her like hair piece was doing. Um, but she seemed nice. And that's that's it. That's my story. <laughs> Sounds eventful. We will enter eventful. that into the minutes here. That'll be fun. Yeah. It's always weird when you go to the first floor. You're never really sure what you find down there. <laughs> oh, you had to go all the way down to the first floor? I just chose to because there are, pe there are people in 401 that I don't know. Oh. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> Third floor has got a good bathroom. It does. Just, just saying. But the elevator to get to the third floor is slow. Oh, yeah. Both of them. There, oh. Yeah, I won't go, I don't use them that much because I'm really convinced one is just not going to open one day. So number two elevator has done some inappropriate things to me as far as elevators go. The other one is just slow. But the golden elevator is fantastic, but it doesn't so go to the third floor. And it doesn't yeah, go to the third floor. It is small, which means only one person can be in it. You haven't been in the elevators in the old stacks, have you? I have not. Because I got trapped in one of those. And let me tell you, it was terrifying. I'm not really a huge fan of the idea even of using those elevators. There's no way to call for help. No, yeah, there's, I was a, say, there's a little yeah. alarm button. Mm -hmm. And I pressed it and the weakest sounding ring came out of it. Like nobody can hear that. I was just saying, who would actually answer it? Would it be Scott? He's only here like every other day. There's no way he would even know. Right. So I just screamed and then Angela came and rescued me. Bless her. I know. So my scream was louder. Wait, which being... Angela? Angela uh, Downs? Yeah. Because she can't really move around as the Easily oh, that, she was in CSD back then um, and see. her desk. Yeah. It would be up a creek. Anyway, lots of talk about state library getting lost in there and going to the bathroom. Very yeah. important things on Thursday. Okay. I'd say that elevator in the stacks was one of those in the stacks elevator. No one can hear you scream kind of deals, but apparently they can. So. I also hold on I to the railing very, very tightly. terrified, so I was screaming with, I was giving it my all. With, with gusto. Yes. Much appreciation for that. Okay. Okay, pulling up the context list here. I see Monica. Hi, Monica. Hi. I was waiting um, to start the meeting, one, until the bathroom discussion ended, and two, in case um, I, I don't see Charlie yet. I don't either. Did you see he had, a, he kind of had something that we can add to the... Yeah, I've got that and a few other things to add to the agenda that I thought we would do. 
Um, but he did say that he might be late because apparently he's his commute is having issues right now because of construction in Indy. So, um, so my guess is, is he'll ridiculous. be here, but he'll be here late. That one. Okay. Um, so I guess we can go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, it is 10 02. Um, call the meeting to order and we can have roll call. Um, and for, uh, we'll go ahead and call out our names and our libraries so that Sandra can get um, roll call and for our new members and our um, visitors. Uh, my name is Monica Boyer. I am at the Jackson County Public Library in Seymour, and I am the cataloging committee chair. And hey, hey, Monica. Yeah. You want me to just read uh, people's names and then you can uh, say if you're here or not? Sure. <laughs> that might be a little bit easier to do this. Um, Whatever works for you. Okay. Anita Brown. Uh, she's not going to be here today. No. Okay. What? And We're not going to hear about conjoined items? <laughs> well, that's oh, another thing yeah. that's on the agenda. And Charles is on his way in. Table. <laughs> okay. Um, Britta, I think. Are you here, Britta? Present. Okay. Uh, Mary Kay Emmerich. No. Mary Kay is not here. I'm sorry. I, I forgot I was unmuted. Okay. Keep, we're looking at your inbox right now, just FYI. Are uh, you really? That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Josephine. Uh, here. Here. Okay. Jocelyn, she's definitely here. Yo. Um, <laughs> Lauren McPike. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Kayla Morris. Here. I am here, Sandra. Uh, Jennifer Steffi. She's here, but she's in chat. Chat, okay. And Christy Witten. Yes, I'm here. Okay. And um, our new members, I know we have Charles who is on his way. Who is our other new member? I'm sorry. Charles is here. Charles oh, is yeah. here, okay. Mm -hmm. Charles, I'm sorry. How do you pronounce your last name? I've seen it like for years now and I don't know how to pronounce it. Let me L E M M E the pretty Lemme. much the E is in silence. Okay, let me. Okay. And our other new member is Emma Ritchie. Emma Ritchie. Is she here? Mm -hmm. I'm here. Okay. What library are you from, Emma? Uh, Eckert Public Library in Auburn. Okay. Are those just our two new members? That is correct. Okay. Welcome, Charles and Emma. And then from the State Library, we've got Ruth and Keith. Is uh, Lynn here? She is in lucky. another meeting and will be here after she finishes there. OK. And if you are a guest and you want to be in the minutes, you can just uh, write in the chat your name and what library you're from. And I may or may not write it down. uh okay are, okay. are yeah, go, you go ahead are you thank, good yeah i'm good thank you monica okay. thank you um okay so you can see on the screen um keith has the agenda up um i did have a few things that i realized yesterday or this morning that should be on here so i would like to suggest that one um you all saw Char Charles' email about um, our local Evergreen Indiana vocabulary. Um, so Keith is adding that now, it looks like. Um, under old um, unfinished business, um, we should probably do procedure guide updates. Um, Britta's is already on there, um, but we, I, I wrote some stuff for mixed formats and for parts with mixed formats and with audiobook parts. If you want to send me those things or kind of ping me in whatever way, I can make sure that those get updated in the 
procedure guide. I know that I have gotten some pings. I've just been focusing on the training manual. So well, that's right. But we need to discuss them and approve them. Right. Um, but um, after the fact. Yeah. Um, so uh, Keith, do you are you in the process of adding that? Uh, if you would like to explain to an educated non cataloging specialist how you would like it worded, I will be happy to put it on the agenda here. Okay. Um, after why don't why don't you make C after after B uh, Britta's series stuff, put a C and put parts and mixed formats. I can and, and you can put my I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. In unfinished business after B. Uh, it should be. Uh... Sorry, yes, sharing is resumed. There you go. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and then if you'd add another one for mm -hmm. audiobook parts. Um, and then I've yeah. added uh, voc vocabulary, um, earning undocumented residents uh, vocabulary. Uh, Actually, why don't you just put local vocabulary because we need to discuss more than just the undocumented. Okay. Lovely. Um, also, I think that we pro, I mean, this is, I, I don't know, I assume we probably need to discuss the annual conference. Yes. Because that should be taking place before our next meeting. That would probably go in new business. Mm -hmm. Right. And we were going to include part, part of, of that. Report, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can put it on there if you like. Okay, well, wherever you want, I just knew that it wasn't on there. And then the other thing that I had is I know that last June is when we voted for uh, chair and um, secretary, so I didn't know if we need to do that. No, you can keep doing it. <laughs> yes. uh, the, what about Sandra? Oh, well, Sandra can keep doing it too. That's kind of what I thought, but <laughs> I see the look. Th thank you, Jocelyn. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I guess I can do it. Weren't so perfect. <laughs> I guess I can do it for another year. You do excellent minutes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, well, so whether you want to add that to the meeting, the agenda or not, those are the things that I have to add to the agenda. Does anybody else have anything to put on the agenda before we approve the agenda? There should be officer elections, even if yeah. people continue in those roles, just in case there are other people that are interested or people that in this very, um, organic conversation don't actually want to <laughs> the cataloging chair term length is about eight years <laughs> you know some officers might not want to stay officers so. as i furiously try and look up the cataloging committee bylaws uh the term length is not eight years that was it's sarcastic. not eight years <laughs> i it's 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 actually 10 i understand mm. <laughs> Okay, anybody else have any other um, things for the agenda? Um, if you do, let me know. Otherwise, I guess if we can have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Can you hold for just one second? Um, so one of the things that we were gonna talk about as part of the annual conference was the cataloging refresher, but maybe it needs to be a separate thing. Um, okay, well, could that go under training? Yes, the only thing is that those are reports as opposed to places for any votes that the committee might do. Okay. If they, so if that, so in that case, it would need to go under new business. That's fine. I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure that we usually vote on, on our renewal or our, um, refresher refresher course. We usually okay. kind of just, yeah, if you just want to have a, a discussion, then we can put that under training. Okay. I can talk about that. It doesn't need to be on the agenda since it's not a vote thing. Okay. Anything else or a motion to approve the agenda? Uh, 
Oh, Jennifer's motioning to approve. Either that or she has an addition. Making a literal motion. <laughs> Sorry, approve. <laughs> Our motion to approve the agenda. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Second. A second. Wow, we got a lot of said. Nobody would motion. Everybody would second. <laughs> Oh, okay, who who want who really wants to be the second? <laughs> I will second it, Christy. Who, Christy? Christy. Okay. Mm. Okay, and uh, so uh, all in favor of approving the agenda as amended, say aye. Aye. Uh, raise aye. your hand. Aye. aye. Or put it in the chat. Any opposed? Okay, so the agenda has been approved. Emma, I'm hoping your eye was for approval. Um, okay, uh, so the March minutes, the March minutes from the March 4th meeting, Sandra um, emailed out, I think last week. Um, does anybody, did everyone look through those? Does anyone have any suggestions for change before we approve them? Just a grammar thing there where it has the underline, the agenda was approved on a motion by seconded by, um, yeah, so get rid of the by seconded. Yeah, it was approved by Britta and seconded by Lauren. Does that, does that need a vote to amend? Uh, we, we'll, we'll make, we'll make any changes and then we'll vote on the amended version. Okay, lovely, okay. Any other comments or changes for the minutes? Is the text on the um, the agenda large enough for everyone to read? On the agenda or in the minutes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's large enough for me, but it could could it could stand to be bigger if you wanted to zoom in a bit. You maybe collapse that the outline view over there, I'm not sure, unless you're using it, Keith. If we're using it, I'm not using it. Because we can't, we can't really use it. Feel free to criticize my grammar all you, you want, my, my spelling. <laughs> it wasn't, it was just, it was just a typo I, I don't, thing. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> and in minutes, it's not really about grammar anyway. It's about getting the gist of what was going on. That's right. Oh, think? Lynn's here. Welcome, Lynn. Uh, any other, um, if no, no one else has any changes, uh, we can have a motion to approve as amended. I'll motion to approve. Is that Lauren? Yes. Yep. I'll second, Britta. Britta second, okay. All in favor of approving um, the March minutes as amended, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the minutes have been approved. Um, so we can move on to the Indiana State Library report. All right, let me ask the State Library if it has anything to report. All righty. Um, I wanted to briefly mention, uh, we, we kind of discussed this already, uh, just the upcoming uh, annual conference will be held on August 26th, that's a Thursday. Um, there will be a cataloging refresher course there, um, and Ruth will talk about that uh, here in a little bit. Um, I don't know if I have any other anything else to report here. Um, Are you soliciting presentations or do you have those all lined up? <laughs> that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Okay, because that's the big part. Yeah, the call for proposals is going to go yeah. out uh, uh, on Monday. Okay. Yeah. And then do we want to mention any of our like upgrade plans, Ruth, or is that we nope. want to do that after? talking to the executive committee, I think. So, yeah, okay, cool. In that case, I have nothing else that I can think of. 
Okay. Do you want me to move on to the training? Please. And thank you. Okay. So uh, I have been working on, okay, let me go back here. So there for, there's going to be a round of cataloging training in July. It's our standard quarterly rota as far as basic cataloging and advanced cataloging. At the same time, I've been working to kind of granularize the training. If you check the YouTube training channel now, the last advanced cataloging course is up there and it's split into about 26 sections. Uh, the goal for that is then to add knowledge checks to those as well as some other things we're waiting on the training server to come online any day now uh, so that practical things can go in there. That will be the, um, the next step towards having a synchronous training and certification for new CAT 1 uh, catalogers. And also the potential for existing CAT 1 catalogers to um, maintain their certification. So that's, I am working on both those knowledge checks, but also really waiting on the training server, which we got some update yesterday, but not update as far as you can go in and start using it. As soon as that also does go live, I, I'll send some more information out through the cataloging list specifically. I'm sure that Keith will send it out other ways. Um, but, and then really start reincorporating the use of that in the catalog training across the board. We have had two, two catalog uh, interest groups so far. I think that they've gone really well. We had some good conversation. Um, and I apologize that the last one was the 13th of last, last month. And so I don't actually remember what we talked about other than I left feeling like it was good conversation and we had accomplished at least some uh, collaboration and figuring some things out. I do believe we talked a little bit more about conjoined items. Anita Brown, why aren't you here? Um, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, as far as other training goes here, I already said that I'm gonna be sending out the call for proposals for the annual conference. So my goal is to, right now we've had an annual cataloging refresher and that's good. It, and it's a requirement for CAT1 and certifications. And so because of that, and because of the way that schedules go, I really think that um, having two potential things a year is more appropriate so that we can have one that is tied to the annual conference and then one that is via webinar. So the first one we're going to have and I don't know the topic yet, we'll do the call for proposals, uh, see if something comes through that that would qualify toward that continuing at that um, recertification. And if not, then I'll come up with something and I'll, I'll talk with several of you what you think would be the best route to go to fill in that spot. And then um, because of the timing, we'll probably see the next a refresher at the next annual conference, which will likely go back to its normal time in the schedule, that being uh, late March, early April, and then get on the this kind of six month schedule of conference six months from them, conference six months from them. So that's that's kind of that is my plan right now. Of course, plans change. It's not kind of my plan. That is 100% my plan. But as we know, sometimes plans in this world to get shot out of the water. Hopefully that is not the case. Ruth. Yes. Um, when we first started doing the refresher trainings, 
like the first one or in the first two or three Mm -hmm. um it was an asynchronous thing on the on the evergreen um I don't know learning training yeah the Moodle course yeah um that might be something that you want to consider I am considering it to, to go back to that so that then everybody doesn't have to be available at the same time absolutely yeah it's it's a matter though of getting content to actually put in the platform first um what I kind of inherited was a platform with obsolete content and so which does not work for me. I don't know a, a better way to say that I need the content before the platform. I can always figure a way out to plug something into it if I have the something, as opposed to dealing with the platform and the content at the same time. So that's kind of where I'm going so with this, that if I can get some good content and maybe it comes from somewhere else, it may not even come from those webinars, but it might uh, to, fill in that platform, whatever that is. I'm not sure that it will continue to be Moodle either, which is really finicky on the back end from my experience. I know that there are some other products that are a little bit more intuitive and don't take so much administrative work just to set up a course. So, but yes, thank you. I, I that That is actually my end goal is to have it as much as possible as asynchronous on these kind of repeated things because it, it's, how do I say this? It's really boring for me to keep teaching the same thing over and over again. And I do see repeat people in the classes and I have to imagine that it's boring for them too. I mean, it's the, it's the same content with maybe some upgrades, but I mean, let's be real. How many times can you you talk about what monographic parts means as opposed to how to actually use it? And you're like, okay, yeah, we got that the first like 50,000 times. Anyway, so that's my that's my report. Any more questions? I mean, I could go on and on, but you mean other people don't find that endlessly fascinating? The definition of parts? No. The use of parts, maybe. And I will talk about more parts later on. Thank you, Jennifer. That's that is very kind I'm, of you to I say. I am very glad you're here and you're doing them now, Ruth. <laughs> I personally, because I got really sick of saying the same thing the same every over. three months. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. tough. So uh, and along with what Monica said, moving it to something asynchronous where people can do it at their own pace and you're not doing it live mm-hmm. every three months is and I, do, I will tell you too, I don't like Moodle. I just don't like, I don't like the platform. I don't like, it. it is not an intuitive way for people to learn. It's basically press this button, watch this video, take this quiz. And as opposed to actually practicing some workflows that might be relevant to your actual job. Yeah. I mean, but anyway, that's a whole long conversation. Uh, Niche Academy is actually what I've been looking for, and I'm getting some information from them. It does have more wiggle room. The interface is more intuitive, and it's prettier. So, and and pretty does matter if you are looking at web pages and having to engage with them. Is that what Pales used when they did their presentation? I'm not sure. I know that Georgia Pines uses okay. uh, Niche Academy, and so does Kendallville for their their marketing stuff in their in their library. So, and yeah, and for recertify, take this. I'm gonna actually have to open. I'm just seeing the recertification pur- purposes. Take this quiz and watch the video. Do the work. If you fail, might make more sense. Yes, for recertification, because that really is just to check that you know maybe any new features that have come along and um, some new policies that might come have come out during the year and it's of can you still parallel park i have a backup camera so yeah 
I can now. I couldn't before. <laughs> we use it at our library and there are a lot of options for teaching quizzes, et cetera. Yeah. I don't. I think that that Sarah and Charles are now having a very meta conversation that only they know the context for. Uh, and Emma Eckert uses it for training. I'm assuming Niche Academy, and it's been really great. Makes it easy to track who's done the training as well. Yes. So. That's it. Do you want me to talk about so, something else? I was going to say, is that all for, of the train, uh, everything you have to say about training? Yes. Do you want me to say anything else? No. <laughs> okay. I was just, I had to unmute myself. And... Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So we can move on to unfinished business. Uh, training manual updates. I'm not sure, Ruth, were you going to discuss that? or? Yeah. If okay. you're cool with it. Yep. Let me get my screen and I'll share real quick. First of all, while I'm doing that, I want to say thank you to all of you who have been working very diligently on this. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's been, those are some, that's a lot of effort and work put into these. And Ruth, I'm going to get this real quick. So I'm going to, I think I need to stop sharing here. Nope, so I'm going to steal it from you. You got it? Okay. Yep. Very good. Okay, let me make sure that. Uh, are you seeing the Google Sheet that has all the lists? Okay, so uh, several of you have been in here today. I saw your little anonymous icons up there in the right-hand corner to check and see where we're at. We have had all of the chapters picked up except for the conjoined holdings. And I also added a chapter in here today as I was going through, I have been working on uh, putting together the master training manual. So gathering the information that um, you have been updating and, and everything in there to, um, compile it. So I did add the add staff catalog view, add chapter three in here for staff catalog views, because it goes from searching the catalog to then the holdings view without really talking about the tabbed interface. So that's, that's something that I will work on. Um, but everything else has been um, claimed, and a lot of it is done. So what I am going to do, there are a few in here, you'll see it says uh, here, see comments for questions I had about this, this chapter, I'm going to address those before I do anything in here. Uh, and then I'm going to do a compilation of everything that has been done. And then make that available to the entire committee to add comments on rather than sending you 25 different links so that you can comment on 25 different documents. The plan then going forward will be to have the working master manual that can be updated as it needs to be and then the one that is publicly linked uh, so that it can be the static one as the other one is the worked on one and then they can kind of rotate uh, as the one gets updated and the cataloging committee determines it's at a state that it can be shared, then that becomes the linked version. And then a new working copy um, is there to be commented. Does that, does that make sense? I'm trying to describe what's going on in my head and I don't feel like I'm doing it very well. So what do you need, uh, uh, or is our next step you, or do we need to be doing something also? It's me. Okay. It's me, and that's actually, that's what I'm going to be working on today is getting that all put together. I've been working on it this morning. Let me show you kind of what it looks like so far. I want to check, see what's in here and chat real quick. Okay, I'm gonna ignore what's in chat. <laughs> that was maybe a question. Okay, let me change my screen share real quickly.
to be this. And so Lauren just posted that she's um, got chapter 10 ready. She just hasn't updated the spreadsheet. So she will. Cool. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be going in there um, and, and checking, looking at the last edit date. And if you want to update the spreadsheet, that's cool. Um, yeah. So this is what the manual will end up being uh, so far. So you, if you use the outline view, um, you can have these as the links. This uh, table of contents will be linked to each chapter. And then the heading will also then be linked to get back to the table of contents. I don't know that that really matters if you're using the outline view, except for you won't have to scroll as much. You can kind of see where I left off here. I was just building the chapter headings here. And I was like, oh, let me see what her her thought process is here. Uh, I forgot. Oh, OK, cool. So you can actually scroll in and link back. But this will also be linked here. And hopefully it will be much easier to navigate compared to the current um, way that it's broken out into chapters and so that you can refer back and forth between chapters in the same document. Then the long term goal with that is to actually move it away from the linked version being a Google Doc. The linked version would be uh, documentation using the Antora platform similar to the um, Evergreen documentation. Let me see if I can get there quickly. In this, so it this is the long term goal to have it like this so that you can actually collapse the side um, things and go in here. And rather than it being the generic Evergreen, it would be our local training manual. And then hopefully the rest of our documentation for Evergreen Indiana as well. Okay, so then we'll just wait to hear from you for when it's ready for commenting. Sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. Chris, do you want me to go ahead and keep working on 26? Yeah, yeah. And it's it's going to take me a second to, to get all the way down there. Um, I'm reformat reformatting all the images, kind of some spacing so that there's a little bit more white space as I was looking through like all this stuff. And this, this is kind of the inheritance of the documentation is it was all kind of squished together. So like I added a space there and trying to see it, an example in here, of course. I'm not finding the like easy ones. Anyway, so I put like boxes around the images to differentiate them from the, the paragraph that comes after and things like that, just kind of little things. So it's gonna take me, it's gonna take me today to, to get through all of that, which that's what I'm gonna work on today along with another thing, but those two things, so. Okay, um, well, good, we will look forward to uh, seeing the finished product. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so now we're going to move on to series information that Britta um, wrote up some stuff for the procedures guide. And I think that covers a couple of different topics, but they're both from Britta. So we're going to let her talk. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I wrote up documentation about um, on how to handle uh, manga um, in the 490 and 800 fields, as well as um, when series titles um, have multiple names or when to have, just, you can read the documentation. Um, I think I'm going to put the, I'll put the link in the chat for it as well, but I think it'll probably also share, I don't know, in the- Be able to share, I think. Okay. 
If not, let me get over here. Lovely. Okay. So this is what I have. Um, oh, also. Oh, I don't. I don't. Know. Anywho. So um, this is what I wrote up for the manga series tracing. Tracing. Um, basically. Um, for searching, I I am recommending that they just use the title, um, the manga title, because since most of the manga, the series title is the title of the is in the 245 field, uh, because the authorized heading is usually in its original language, and um, so I'm recommending that we can put the 490 as what's listed on the title, so like Black Butler. But in the 800, it would be its authorized heading as the. the thank you. I'm, um, I'm useful. Hooray degree. <laughs> um, but saying that it's appropriate to include the 498, but maybe not required. I don't know. You guys might want to might think otherwise. Um, but that's what I have for that. Thank you for writing that up. Um, do does uh, I know that you sent this out ahead of time and everybody seemed to think it was fine, but does anybody have any um, suggestions for change to the manga um, stuff that Britta wrote out? Um, and if so, I mean, Britta, do you know, do you already have like what page number you want this to go in? Uh, I probably did at one point. I'll have to look at the, I'll, have, I'll get back to you on that. Okay, that's fine. As we keep going. Um, and then um, below that, I included the series of multiple names, and multiple authorized settings. Um, as well as um, how to handle series with multiple names, but one authorized setting, and then titles that are part of multiple series. And then I had the question, when do we consider a series title important enough to add a second 498-800 set when there is already an authorized setting? Because I know that's another um, thing that we run into. Do we want to um, vote to approve the manga wording and then discuss your multiple series stuff? Because I feel like they're two separate things. I mean, yeah, we can. And I, I, I guess that's up to the committee. If the committee is good with everything else that you wrote, we can just have one um, motion that covers everything, so. Anybody have any thoughts, comments, questions? I keep forgetting I'm sharing screen. <laughs> I'll wholeheartedly motion to approve this. I think this I'll looks wonderful. I had um, a couple of questions just about the um, uh, series with multiple names, because I know that that was something that I was running into a lot when I was working with series earlier this year, so. yeah. Um, okay, so just to verif verify on that is was Charles the second Charlie? Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, Lauren, was that was that motion to approve everything that's in this document, both both procedures for the manga and for the multiple series headings? Um, it definitely can be. I'm very much about the uh, manga. I think that's wonderful, but I do want to hear what Emma's uh, yeah. questions are yeah, first. Yeah. So I'm mostly just approving the manga now that Emma says that she wants to ask some questions. Okay, well, so then why don't we vote on the manga? Mm -hmm. Your your motion didn't actually clarify, so we'll pretend. Sorry. That, no, it's all right. <laughs> so we'll sorry. pretend that it was for just the manga. Um, so can I have a vote to um, on the motion to approve the manga series tracing to go yeah, into the I will, I will motion. I'll motion that way. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and Charles, are you still um, seconding? Yeah, seconding for the manga series tracing, looking good. Okay. Uh, so can we, um, everybody in favor of approving the manga series tracing procedures by Britta, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, so that the manga series tracing has passed and will be added to the procedures guide. Britta, you can probably talk to uh, work with Ruth to find out where you want to insert that into the procedures guide. Okie dokie. Um, and now, Emma, do you want to talk about a uh, series? Yeah, I was, uh, I was doing a series project earlier this year just for my library that I put on hold because I was running into some confusion with series with, with multiple names and stuff like that. Because technically, if I'm understanding the cataloging rules correctly, and I, I could not be, there's only supposed to be one 800 field. And we've kind of, my experience has been that there's been some bouncing back and forth because a lot of libraries will use alternate series titles. And while we can use a 490, it doesn't look as clean in Evergreen as the 800 does. And so we're just kind of having some confusion about whether or not we should do just the authorized heading. So like in this example, just the um, uh, Kurt Austin adventures versus the NUMA files, or if that there should be like an 800 for everything that for any series that a library has connected to the book. And so I guess, I, I guess my question is just um, uh, wanting to make sure that there's more just some discussion about maybe what the best way is to do that just for patron access, because I found that the way Evergreen works, it can't, collect all of those keywords. So if you have the Harry Potter series, Harry Potter, Harry Potter series, if you click the one that says the Harry Potter series, it's not necessarily gonna pull all of those variations. And so a patron can click a series title and not see everything that's in that series. And so, Emma, are, are you wanting to have unauthorized series titles in the 8XX? I personally am a bigger fan of going simply with authorized, but I guess mostly my question is just about what other catalogers think so that we can begin to kind of get a little more of an official consensus so that for those of us who are trying to do more consistent series for our patrons mm -hmm. that we're not treading on people's toes or confusing records. I think that's what writing up this documentation is supposed to help um, because there are, we, we try to do what's right, but I think other, we're just, we're not all on the same page. Um, so I think writing this up and including it in the documentation will, should help, um, like guide everyone on this is what we expect, this is how it should look in our um, catalog. Um, and yeah, words are hard. <laughs> and for what it's worth, the, the 490 is supposed to be a transcription field. Right. So it's the type of, it's the series how it's on the item itself. And granted, not every uh, item that has a series title necessarily will have an approved like thing on the item itself saying what the series title is. So sometimes it's just 
not perfect. And oftentimes, as we've seen, we're looking at Christine Fion right now for crying out loud. Um, sometimes what's on the item itself isn't even reflected in the authorized heading, uh, which is which can be very frustrating. Um, or things change and they don't get changed in the authority file uh, somewhere along the way, which is again, frustrating. But it also, I don't think as far as rules go and consistency sake, uh, we, we can't just ignore the, the 490 that has the series information on it that's transcribed from the item. It's, it's just part of the procedure to have a 490 that you know, says what the series information is on the item itself. But I do agree with the Harry Potter example that it, it seems to be one of those examples where for some odd reason, multiple authorized headings have come up. And I mean, I don't know how else we could uh, say, you know, this is the authorized heading you're supposed to be using for Harry Potter unless we manually went in and removed I don't know if this would be a good idea, but remove some of the, well, hang on, Sarah's saying something. Yeah, so uh, Sarah has in the past, when we've discussed this, one of the challenges was that, was what is indexed and what isn't. Uh, I want to clarify, are you talking about indexed in the database? Yeah, and I, okay. think, I think it's just the 800. I don't think the 490 is indexed at all. Yeah, is it? My understanding is it's just the eight hundred is because the eight hundred would be indexed as a title, mm -hmm. an author and a title. Um, yeah. But the four ninety, since it's just a free text, whatever's on the item, and I'm pretty sure that's not. That that's what I thought because originally what I had thought would be the best solution to a lot of the issues is that you can have multiple for not that when you have a series with a number of names, you could have multiple 490s, obviously the first one being the transcribed one, um, and then have the 800 be authorized. But the trouble is then when people search for uh, the, the series by one of the names that isn't authorized, then they won't find it. Using right. the series search? Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it, yes, exactly as you described, it's not going to pull in any of the information from the 490. That's just going to be a keyword search if they want to search for that. Uh, Ricky has a comment. I was led to believe we shouldn't remove other series someone added to the record since a library might have all their books labeled under something completely differently. Our library uses novelist and fantastic fi fiction since we are taught they were the best sources. Uh, Ricky, are you referring to for the 490? I'm pretty sure she is. Yeah, as I say, I yeah, are those still what we should look to? Yes, I mean there there are some other sources, but those are those are good resources for that if, you, if you're not just transcribing directly off of the first one should be the authors if, if not the item yeah, itself, of course this would be the author's website mm -hmm. yes but then you have like ted decker who has a, still hasn't figured out what his series actually are and they just like you know run around in circles literally circles but we should but we shouldn't make an 800 for each of the 490s um no. No. No, because the 800s are authorized. It's an authorized heading. Okay. Well, well, oh, sorry, Christine. No, <laughs> that's okay. So in some cases, it, it, the, cha the problem with not doing that is that then when you have like a series that has multiple names that are, it's commonly known by, um, I'm, I don't have an example off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's examples listed here, but it like, um, the the Louise Penny series so it's like Inspector Gamache and then it's also what like Four Pines or whatever Three Pines Mystery three pines. Series mm -hmm. so I think that Three Pines is the authorized name but for, Inspector Gamache Mysteries is right what yeah. everyone calls it so if you do a series search for Inspector Gamache you're not going to come up with 
results if you don't put an 800, mm -hmm. even though that's not the authorized field heading. So that's the trouble with not putting an 800 for the alternate names. I'm wondering, so go ahead, Emma. Oh, I was just gonna say like in that case, cause I'm still, you know, I've been using Evergreen but I'm still kind of figuring out exactly how everything works. Mm -hmm. I guess I would always say err on the side of patron access. So like- Agree a hundred percent. So I, I guess I would amend my previous concern to say in that case, should we probably make, if 800s are technically repeatable, should we just make sure that every book in a series, and you know, that's a massive project, obviously, that can be undertaken at a later date. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what I was initially working on when I ran into this issue, is making sure that every book in a series has whatever series heading is needed, whether that getting rid of ones that aren't authorized or saying, we want a 490800 for any series that is linked to that title. I think that there are multiple things that you're describing. Um, <laughs> so definitely, I mean, if something is part of the series, it, it needs to be documented as that way. I, I'm wondering if this might be something that we need to take advantage of our local thesauri and possibly have these things that are essentially unauthorized but recognizable series or publicly authorized as opposed to LOC authorized that we can add similar to we, we've added genre terms we, we've added uh, subject headings and perhaps this is another place that we need to do that again a huge undertaking but I am concerned about just anybody in the consortium just adding an unauthorized mm -hmm. heading to the 8xx and saying, well, it was for patron access, which, I mean, nobody disagrees that that, I mean, that's our end goal yeah. is patron access, but it's still uh, because that is an authorized field, we need to be utilizing authorities. Now we may like define how we're using authorities, but they still need to be respected and utilized, if that yeah. makes sense. And I don't like necessarily have an answer. I was just, I just wanted to kind of spark a discussion about it because I know from just my own experience working with it, mm -hmm. that it's kind of consistently been super confusing for me. Yeah, yeah. it's a great discussion, super important. Mm -hmm. And I would be more than happy if we reach a point where we decide that we need to implement something, I would be more than happy to assist because it's a topic that I'm super passionate about. Yeah, I agree. Uh, is Lynn, is Lynn on here still? Yeah, but she may be She's doing another. Like, end. I mean, revisiting having the series search also look at the 490, as Sarah said, would. Yeah, I think, that, I think that that is an evergreen ILS development feature. We had some discussion during the um, international conference about um, searches actually scoping out to additional fields and that I did put over uh, in in the chat that uh, I do or no I didn't I put on this document um, a comment that if that is what something we'd like that there needs to be a launch pad ticket that is issued and we need to know about it so that those of us who have launch pad accounts can go and add heat and we can publicize it to the rest of the Evergreen Committee. I don't think it would be a difficult development feature, but- well, famous last words. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> Shh. Don't say that, Ruth. It's yeah, similar to, exa it's exactly the same conversation that we had about another type of search during the, the, converse, the conference. That's what I was actually looking into was was our indexing and how the 490 and the um, 800s were indexing. Um, so uh, give me a few Bob more minutes actually, and I'll get back in touch with you. There is a bug in Launchpad that Bob 
can you put that over 2018 yeah can you put that into chat Thanks. Although this is a combination of 490. We're not indexing. Sorry, I'm just randomly reading things. Yeah, and I'm not sure that it should necessarily be tied to tracing. Right. But, but this but this is definitely, I mean, this is the same scope issue. Yeah. I like Meg's comment. <laughs> the indexing may be following the strictest sense of the rules, but it isn't user no. friendly. And the the point of the rules is to kind of, you know, draw us in and make things controlled. But the goal is for our patrons to find stuff. Right. So somewhere in the middle. So do we want to, Britta went to the trouble to propose a solution, even if it's not a perfect one, do we want to implement that into the procedures guide or do we want to have more discussion um, and maybe have a subcommittee get together to discuss it? No but to everything. <laughs> <laughs> I thought in RDA that brackets would encompass the whole like subfield, not an individual tag. I, I might be wrong. I was thinking that it was AACR2 that worked that yeah, way. Yeah, I think it's the other way around. But so we're good. You think what's the other one? Oh, I, no, I think they're each in brackets in RDA. And that, in that's what I thought. Too, it was one whole string was in. I thought that in RDA that each subfield oh, had its yeah. own set of square brackets. Because I hated, I hated the way it was in AC, AACR two, and it's because one it thing I like so about weird. RDA. <laughs> right. Well, aren't we kind of doing kind of both AACR two? We should. I mean, yeah, yes. I'm not gonna like give someone a flunking grade if I see that in a record. Yeah, but <laughs> we do have hybrid records, but we are working yeah. toward RDA. Yeah, well, this is ugly, but I'll go with it. I don't think it's ugly. I agree with Jocelyn. It was uglier the other way. <laughs> I think that it's uglier here, but when it renders in like the OPAC or anything like that, then it's less. It's, then this yeah, is less ugly. It's always uglier when, on our end. Yeah, yeah. we always get the trash. It looks was maybe tidier hard to, yeah, when hard it's got say. like HTML all around it and stuff. Yeah, unless it's ISVNs in the in the item status <laughs> view, and then you get all sorts of chaff for no good reason. Okay. So I'm game with whatever you guys, the committee wants to um, approve or table or whatever. Because I'll, I mean, I'll always be, probably be thinking about this just because, yeah, I love series, so. I'm in favor of approving what she has and then, you know, th th that way we have guidance out there and then we love labels. And uh, do modify in the future later and figure out if we need to do something differently. But that way, there's well written guidance right there. Yeah, start the groundwork. Well, in that case, Emma, would you like to move to approve, uh, uh, break in your your motion um, ability? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve it pending further review, so. 
well, we don't want to make it pending for the yeah. review. Oh, we want to. I cannot word today. <laughs> What's our part? I will make a motion to approve it. There we go. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, so all in favor of approving Britta's, um, the, the three additions to the procedures guide that uh, Britta has written for multiple series names, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, uh, then we have approved all of those that Britta wrote. Um, thank you, Britta, for writing those up because I wouldn't have wanted to do that. I kind of have fun doing it. Like, <laughs> well, good. Uh, we'll put you to work again. What are we um, <laughs> Yeah, Britta was also like hard at work yesterday, like picking up chapters and things. So, well, that one chapter here also. I figured I could like, you know, update a couple pictures. Well, we've all decided that you're a machine. <laughs> Whatever you're getting paid for. Being I didn't want to do logging. anything at, at my library that I actually had to do. So I figured I'd check the chapters to see if there was anything We all know else. about productive procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> It's how things ever get done. I don't want this to do something else. I'll do I can this thing. Focus on. So, okay, I'm going to stop sharing. So then, Britta, you and I will discuss where uh, we want to put these in the specifically because, in the procedures yeah. guide. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, Britta. Uh, thank moving. You. Um, well, I was going to say moving on, but actually, I remembered something else. Uh, while we were talking about that, that's not exactly on the agenda, but could fall there, so we can still talk about it. Um, we talked, and you guys touched upon it a little bit ago, about series statements for audiobooks. That's been something that we've discussed over the last several months, and the um, uh, the subfields after the A and T in the 8XX fields. Um, is that something that you guys want to discuss? Is that something we want to Did put we not off and... make a decision about it the last time? I thought, I thought Lynn was going to check to see if the subfield S could be suppressed. Oh, that's right. That's she right. was. Um, Lynn, did you do that? No, I haven't done that yet. Okay, then we'll talk about this later. So uh, let me get this straight what I'm supposed to be looking at. So when I'm probably going to butcher this, but so when people are searching for series, if an audiobook has a subfield S, I think, are they separated? Are they not visible when people search for series uh, under the series title? Um, it makes or, it a different series. Okay. And this is. And I think if you click, like if you're looking at a record with that, if you click on it, I think it's, I, I think it is like Jocelyn said, a different series. It so will only show you this se other series with the talking, whatever it is. With the spoken so, word. Right. Spoken word, which is stupid and I hate it. I, um, so if we can just have it ignore that field completely, uh, mm -hmm. um, then that would solve no so um, that it's still documented in the mark because yeah. that's still important but we don't <laughs> we don't care about that subfield s it can be there but we don't care about it so maybe then the answer is to have lynn see if it can be suppressed and ignored but if it can't can we can you at the state library do a mass edit of everything and just take out all subfield s's in the whole catalog should we care if there's an authorized heading with a subfield S? Well, a lot of them are authorized headings. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem. If, <laughs> if someone had just gone in and started this and made it up as a new rule, then yes, we could say we're getting rid of that because that's not really a thing, but they mm -hmm. are authorized headings. Okay. Is, is there any reason why that is important to retain? 
just that it's it is authorized and it's hard to say we're not going to let we don't want things that are legit in the catalog because that just causes a lot of confusion um mm -hmm. if there's a way to suppress it i personally would feel much more comfortable yeah. with that as opposed to stripping yeah. it. exactly um is it technically possible to strip it yes of course it is to, to do a mass strip of one subfield from one. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's one, definitely one tag from not subfield. the first solution, yeah. but. But people are still going to bring them in anyway. Even mm -hmm. if we go through and strip, yeah. they're going to come in as people bring them in through C3950. Oh, you're right. C3950. You're, you're correct. Even, but I yeah. figured if we, um, like I said, it's a secondary measure, but if we have to do it, then we could strip them and then put a thing in the policy that we don't want them. That we don't want them. Well, I think it should, we should be able to suppress it because it's not, when you do an 800, it's not looking at the subfield B at all. Right. It ignores that. So it seems feasible that we could also tell it to ignore the, any other subfield because there are other options for the 800 field and subfields and we don't um, actually look at all of that data because mm -hmm. some of it is stupid data. That 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 makes sense. So I guess I guess we important, will... not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Irrelevant for our purposes. <laughs> um, I guess then, Lynn, if you would look into that and bring that information to our September meeting, and we can discuss yeah. it then. Well, Earl, I'll have I'll post what I find that I can do, that we can do, on the listserv, and oh. let everybody know, and then. Do you want to put it on the list server or send it to the committee? Well, the committee. Okay. The committee list, I guess, mm -hmm. as opposed to the okay. public catalog. Be great. Thing. Okay. After staring at the series of multiple name settings, uh, but one author cutting, since we are, uh, I'm just being me, uh, since we are including a novel from the NUMA files as a untraced 490, should we remove it from the 245 field? Since we don't include series in the 245 field. Um, but that's a field that is transcribed and that's that's the way that it's on the book, book itself. Okay. And since it's not the actual series name, I think that would probably be okay to leave it in the subfield B. Okay. I just I just was staring at it and that's a good question. No, it's a good question. <laughs> Right, because it's also, I mean, if you do a keyword search, the subfield B is searchable in keyword search. Okay. And it's a, it's a subfield B. It's not like those kids books where the series is in the 245A and then it's, those are wrong. Super wrong. <laughs> right. So when it's in a subfield B, I don't think it's, it's as big a deal in my humble opinion. I don't know what's wrong with these authors, not and publishers not taking it's into publishers. consideration how we actually they don't think get these about things. us they don't they should run everything oh, by us grief. yes i have a list of authors i don't like based on uh, their publishing yeah. <laughs> when you establish a series could you just keep us in mind i i cataloged a book the other day and the way they formatted their table of contents they put the author before the name of the essay. No. And so I had to figure out how to catalog it as it was written in the table of contents. And it took me like 45 minutes. <laughs> I feel like there should just be little note cards that are posted to pay that say, I hate you. You're a bad, bad publisher. And then they'll just understand that it was from a librarian. And so it has to be because of that. But anyway, <laughs> never mind. Uh, so if we're done with series statements, <laughs> uh, we will move on. Take over the screen. <laughs> uh, move on to parts, our other favorite topic. Um, I emailed everyone, re-emailed a little bit ago um, my my proposed wording for parts and mixed media. Um, if Ruth or Keith, you want to share that on the screen, you're welcome to do so. Um, the only feedback I got about it was uh, to not call them music CDs and just call them CDs. 
I have not made that change, but I'm more than happy to, for us to make that change. So um, if... Um, Keith, do you have that real quick? Otherwise I can pull it up. So if we want to look at that and if since uh, we can discuss that and then hopefully improve it. Um, you're talking about in the, the audio book parts, um, email you sent. Uh, that's the, that's the next yeah. item on the agenda. This okay. is the one for mixed formats. I, I sent two emails. Mixed formats, okay. Sorry, all the links in my email are um, obfuscated by our um, firewall, which makes it harder firewall. to see useful things here. Do I need to? Do I need to share it? That, if you if you could, that would probably be easier. Yeah. One link is taking me to the the Jackson County Public Library page here, so I'm not. Yeah. Oh, that's that's in my signature. Uh, okay. Oh, that explains it. Uh, where do where do we go now? I don't know if I'm allowed to present, Ruth. Um, can you click the share screen or not? Oh, yeah, I was ignoring that. I cannot start oh. screen share while the other participant is sharing. Um, so, okay. there you go. Thank you. Problem solved. Uh, let me see here. Are you seeing parts on mixed formats records? Nope. Not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. yep. There it goes. Okay. So yep. this is my, this is what I proposed um, starting from occasionally all the way down to here. Um, and like I said, the only thing that anyone mentioned was um, changing CD, changing music CD to CD. Looks super lovely. Yes, thank you. It does. <laughs> You're just um, lovely, Monica. What'd you say? You're just lovely. lovely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, if anyone has, um, in, in that second column of that table where it says music CD, we can change that to CD. Other than that, uh, does anyone have any suggestions or do we want a motion to approve? It's a comment from Jennifer Duffy. I like the table very much. Nice, clean look. Comment from Mary Kay Emmerich. I like the table very much, easy to consult. And I like the change from music CD to strictly CD. Mm -hmm. That way, whether it's music or spoken word, doesn't matter. Different format, move on. So with that, I'll approve. I'll move to approve. Thank you. Can I get a second? A CD. I'll second it. Okay. Um, any other discussion? I'm sorry. Who was the second? Yeah. Christy. Christy. Okay. And just to clarify that that is having music CD changed to CD. Correct. Okay. Um, okay. So all in favor of approving these procedures as amended, say aye. Hi. Hi. Sarah has a question. It might be helpful to end it or comment. It might be helpful to indicate what to do, not to do, where there is an audio book with another format like a CD-ROM. Sarah, we um, we discussed all the weird possibilities that that can come up, and we decided to only do the most common ones and then leave, uh, add in a comment about basically use logical part naming. So I don't know that we need to add this specific instance. Um, I asked for eyes, are there any opposed? Okay, 
uh, then this, these procedures have been passed. Um, Ruth, I went ahead and put in there which pages that I, where I wanted them to go. Um, so we can move on in the agenda to um, audiobook parts, which I also emailed you and is very short. Um, I don't know though what I'm sharing right now. Are you seeing my audiobook parts email? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so this is very brief, um, but the, this statement is what I wanted to add for because we discussed audiobook par using parts on audiobooks and whether or not uh, or when they should be used, um, and that you should. Um, let the other libraries know if you happen to add them because they're not common. Um, so, uh, yeah, Sarah, um, that, that's, I believe that the procedures guide currently says not to use parts on audiobooks. Um, and so that's what we're saying, don't use them on audiobooks, but then we're going to add this to say, if you do have to use them, let other libraries know. Um, any comments, suggestions, questions for this? I have a question for Sarah. Um, are you talking about, so there's an audio book that then perhaps does include like a CD-ROM and you're wanting to circulate the CD-ROM separately or not? I was understanding that. Yes, if you don't circulate it separately, no, definitely don't need parts. Right. Or want, because <laughs> it just adds, I mean, work. They also might talk you out of using. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's valid. But as Monica said, I think that that is already in the procedures guide. I'd have to look at the exact verbiage with the other screen on my computer that I don't have. Any other comments, questions, motions to table, motions to add? Comments, questions? I will say for, for what it's worth, obviously I'm not gonna be voting on this. I think that it would be valuable to have this in here, even if for some reason it seems imperfect because this is, I mean, it's a living document obviously and it can be revisited if somebody figures out that it doesn't work or it's causing more I also think that um, since you say that, Ruth, I, I in what we just approved on the mixed meat, mixed formats one, mm -hmm. um, I, be, I believe that I included this statement or a very similar one in that section of the right. handbook as well. So this will appear in multiple or this idea, idea. will appear mm -hmm. in multiple places. Yeah. Christy, what were, what were you saying? Yeah, I agree that if you're it's best to tell other libraries that, you know, if you're doing something that's going to affect the ability for holes. Yes. Replacing them. My apologies. I was distracted while you guys were uh, talking a minute ago. Do we have or, um, like a note with the parts or like add it again, um, where it says, if you are not separating these, if you are not circulating these, uh separately do not add parts that's what we were discussing and okay, i believe you. that that's in there i can that's why you pay attention <laughs> well you have other things i'm sure going on hold on i would personally be in favor of potentially adding it anyway just since logically it makes sense to also be in that area because that's where people would potentially look for that information
Uh, any other thoughts, motions to approve? Just, just as a note, there's, there's actually a whole section in here for using monograph parts for audiobooks that, um, and it does say explicitly, if the audiobook is only ever packaged in a single container, I do think maybe that wording can be updated because sometimes we have, we Velcro together or tape together multiple containers. No part should be assigned, but, but it is in here to not do that, so. Um, if well, this isn't something we want to add right now, does someone want to motion to table this? I'll motion to approve it. Thank you. I'll second it. Mm. Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, all in favor of approving adding this wording to the procedures guide, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we've approved adding the audio books parts um, to uh, the, uh, the statement about audio books parts to the procedures guide. Um, so we can move on to conjoined items, which we are not going to discuss. Um, I, well, no, that's not true. We're gonna discuss a little bit. I told Anita that I would bring, that I would bring this up to the um, uh, committee today. So hold on just a second, cause I forgot I was going to do that. And so I'd find the right email. Um, but I told, I had told her a couple of months ago that it might, this might be something that she could do a session at the annual conference on. That's just what I was thinking. Right. So, so then um, I said, I said, if that's something you want to do, you know, you might want to write up a proposal and why, what you use them for and that kind of thing. So she sent me this the other day. And so I told her I would tell you guys this. Um, the Kendallville Public Library is using conjoined items to create virtual shelves of similar materials that allow for quick retrieval when a search is performed in the Evergreen Catalog. Many similar types of items can be viewed after a search and will allow the staff or a patron to see the entire collection and then click on the link and go to the particular item in which they are interested. A search could be performed to see all of the new books, the magazine collection, library of things, the read along collection, et cetera. The catalog will show the list of items on the, catalog, on the Kendallville coming soon shelf that will allow patrons to put each item on hold. And then she sent a second bullet that says, the purpose for the items being shown in the catalog together helps to group items on one mark and allows patrons to see which libraries have related items. So this is what she told me she is using them for. Um, I asked her if um, um, if she'd be willing to present or co-present at uh, the conference, and she said she would. Um, but she had also said, before I even asked her if she was willing to present, she said, um, where do we Learning how to conjoin items is a very straightforward process and can be covered quickly. I can see that our use of this option might be a little unusual, however, and could require a bit more instruction and explanation. I don't know that an entire session would be necessary, so you might consider combining it with another topic. So this is what she has to say about conjoined items. I don't know if we want to recommend to her that she do a proposal uh, when Ruth talks about that in a few minutes or tomorrow or whatever she said, um, or if we want to, I did see, I think we said, I think the minutes from the last meeting said this might be something she'd wanna talk about at a round table, um, an interest group. Um, we could make that suggestion to her. 
we can table it again till the next session, but that will be after the annual conference. So um, what does everyone think about this? I think it would be a good session. And if it's not going to take up the full allotted time, I'm sure we can find some other thing to, to combine with it. Um, Anita is kind of the queen of figuring out things to do with Evergreen that nobody else has thought mm -hmm. of doing. Um, so there might be some other things that she just hasn't realized um, that, that would actually, share. yeah, she could share. Because I know she does a lot of stuff with buckets. She's She uses buckets in a lot of different mm -hmm. ways. Um, so I think we could, I think we could get a full, full hours worth of content. Absolutely. And, and during the uh, international conference, there was a session that kind of um, pulled in some cataloging miscellanea and conjoined items was one of those things. And as they were talking about it, I was like, oh, wait, but we have more that we can actually add to that based on what um, Anita has been doing. I definitely think that we could fill at least an hour with the conjoined items, how that also then um, could tie into, again, her use of buckets and then possibly carousels um, and all of those being different ways that catalogers can facilitate um, kind of this second level patron discovery. Um, yeah, I, I think, think carousels Emma, Emma's... would be good. I don't know that we've ever really discussed. Carousel. We haven't. We haven't kind of purposefully because they haven't been activated yet. So I think that that might be um, uh, maybe a separate session because it's not exactly related. Um, and like Emma said, Emma made a good point that there's probably going to be plenty of question time. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, then I will email her and ask her to uh, propose that uh, for a session at the, um, at the Yeah, I was going to actually email her directly. If you want to, that's cool. I was going to send the proposal form along to her and everything. Okay. So. I mean, you but can if, do that too. Yeah, uh, you, 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 we probably should both. Then, then make sure that the point gets across. Anybody else that wants to email Anita and say, "Hey, what about <laughs> conjoined items at the annual conference?" Right. We don't need to tell her we talked about it. Right. Okay, so that takes care of unfinished business. Finally, um, new business. We we've kind of already discovered discussed our new co new committee members. Um, Emma, do you want to introduce yourself? And Keith, can you put the agenda back up uh, as a shared screen? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sorry, I have headphones on right now, so my hearing's a little muffled. Um, I am Emma Ritchie. I am the Tech Services Assistant Manager at Eckert Public Library. So job change since I submitted my application. And I just, absolutely love uh, of, uh, cataloging, so wanted to be involved. Good, welcome. Uh, Charles? Uh, do I have to say much? No, <laughs> but your name and your library and maybe your title would be nice. <laughs> uh, Charles Lemmy, I am a cataloger at the Hussey Mayfield Memorial Public Library in Zionsville, soon to be uh, yeah, just, yeah, I work in Zionsville right now, and I've been doing this stuff for six years now, I think. Oh, gosh. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to be here. Uh, looking forward to working together. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. both for your willingness to step onto the committee here. It's always good to have new, new people, new perspectives here. You can see we're a very lively bunch. Uh, I wonder if we're going to join Charles. Yep. Yeah. What's that, Britta? I said I wondered when Charles was going to join. <laughs> when he was gang pressed into service. Yeah. More like, oh, there's an opening. I, I would like to join. There's all of, always openings. <laughs> 
Um, okay, moving on. Christy, I decided to put you on the agenda without your without your okay. <laughs> okay, I'll unmute myself. Um, I emailed Monica because I have been finding a lot of records where because I catalog mostly in flat text editor, I see all these extra spaces. Um, and they can be in a, almost every field. A lot of the times they're in subject, title, author, and the 330s, but I've also seen them in the 028, the 024. A lot of the times the spaces are at the very beginning, you know, after the delimiter A, and especially with title that I know that throws the, the alphabet, you know, the alphabetization out. So I had to ask her about it. And I thought I had pinned it down by looking at the libraries who were doing, you know, the last, you know, the last edit, but then that didn't work after a while because it just got to be crazy. <laughs> and I didn't know whether it was getting pulled in from them like copy and pasting into a record or. That would be my guess. And so Monica said she had talked to Lynn and Lynn thought that maybe they were actually being, spaces were being added. So Sometimes. I didn't know whether we should just email the entire cataloging community and say, you know, please be aware that, you know, if you are bringing records in to look for spaces, especially especially in the fields where, you know, it throws off how the OPAC sees it. When they're at the beginning of the field, I sometimes think it's very hard to see that in the mark editor mm -hmm. versus the text, flat text editor. Um, but I have a feeling they're coming in. I can't imagine someone is intentionally going in and doing that. The other way that I wondered if some of them are getting there, I, I'm, I'm not fancy like you guys. I don't have OCLC to import records from. And I use Bookware, which does put spaces at the end of lines when I copy and paste, mm -hmm. but not in the middle of fields. And what I, but so when I run out, when I still can't find a record, I sometimes go out to other libraries catalogs and borrow the mark from their OPAC and copying and pasting from another OPAC into the flat text editor or the maybe the mark editor might be putting some of those spaces in. I also wonder if this isn't a change in how things work because like I see that I just tested this and I see if you add spaces in the flat text editor and you switch to the mark view, you can't see the spaces in the mark view. Right, right. But I That's... feel like they used to also disappear in the flat text editor once you saved it. Well, the one example I had sent to Monica was um, Suli by John Grisham. I mean, I it was the large print and yeah. I, it was sorry like, to interrupt, Christy. I want to say I see that they are retained, but I'm saying formerly, I think it, they used to disappear in the flat text editor. So if you saved, looked at the mark editor, they'd be gone. And when you switched back to the flat text editor, they'd also be gone. So this might be a bug. My, yeah, I feel like it might be. That I feel like it used to, you know, delete the extraneous spaces when you saved in both views, like from the record. I, and maybe I'm just, misrem maybe I'm misremembering and maybe I just assumed that was the case because you, they appear to disappear when you look at them in the mark editor, but. I'm I wondering if that wasn't a change from the staff editor. It retained. Yeah, because I remember doing that, I think, in the staff editor, but when we switched to the web client, that was something I noticed was, um, yeah. especially I noticed the, the spacing issue uh, when you use subfield queues in the 020, like when I go to create, you know, the subfield queue, and then I look at it in flat text editor, and there's now an extra space at the start of the, the subfield queue. 
And then, um, but if you look at it in Mark Editor, there's no space. Um, because I, I remember, because there was specifically like muscle memory, whenever I would add them in staff editor, I would always backspace at the start because they always seemed like it would create an extra space uh, for some odd reason when you created that new subfield, which when we did the started using the web client, yeah, the, the spacing issue started cropping up. And, and oftentimes, like you don't see that extra space unless you're looking at it in flat text or you you know, page over to flat text real quick. And it's like, oh gosh, there are spaces in every, at starting every line. That's weird. I, I think that in, in my experience using pasting from bookware, like I said, um, there will usually be a space at the end of the line when I paste it in flat text, but it's interesting because it doesn't automatically delete them, except if I when if I go to the mark editor and then back to the flat text editor, I think it does delete the extra spaces that are at the end of the 007 and the 008. Um, I'm not positive about that, but that seems to be the case. And I wondered if that's because the 07 and the 008 are have a fixed number of fields. They do. Right. Yeah. But, but and so Evergreen maybe is taking that into account and automatically deleting those extra spaces that are at the end of the line. I believe that that is the case, Monica. So if it can do it with the 007 and the 008, can it do it with the rest of the record? I'm looking uh, at um, Launchpad bugs, and there is one. I'll post the link to it. That's kind of related to this. So the. In the 007 and the 008, the only reason that it's getting deleted is not because it's recognizing that it's a space, it's because it's saying this is too many characters. Um, the other fields are not constricted in the same way, and so it wouldn't. So there's um, something called Evergreen has an existing stock Evergreen breaker format, and then there's also a mark edit, mark edit style breaker format, and these According to this bug, this is affecting spaces around mark tags and delimiters. Um, as I say, the other thing as well is that the enhanced mark editor is, and this is not for our version, but for the next version of the staff catalog will be different. I mean, it, it will be the same, yeah. but it will be different because yeah. it's being written into Angular from the Angular JS that I believe it's in right now. That is correct. I think uh, uh, wait until then and seeing. <laughs> um, but I don't know if, if there's a way we can identify affected records, Lynn. Because having our spaces at the beginning of, of fields, that does affect Lots. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, especially the 245s. Um, I guess a query that's looking for null. Well, it wouldn't be looking for null because there are something in the field or else. The, yeah, it'd the, be looking for a blank or something like it'd that. It'd be looking for a blank. Um, Mary Kay Emrich here. Um, I know when I bring in records from other resources and I use WorldCAD and I use some copy paste and I have to do some cleanup and different things in flat text editor. But when I'm doing that, I try to be very mindful of, I'm gonna show my age here, AACR2 line spacing, because quite frankly, that's how I think about cattle, how I think when I'm cataloging. That goes back to my rock and chisel training that it's publisher space or it's it's city space colon space i have to i'd have to be doing it to to go through the the litany but some of us oldsters may still be doing that i try to catch the spaces in the front of the lines because they're devastating if you don't catch them but I'm not looking at spacing at the ends of my um, line items. So 
that's something we may need to point out. I would recommend maybe just like put, putting something in the listserv, just because I know when I took my cataloging class, we were trained just in order to, it wasn't very clear that this was why it was done. It was done to help just make it easier to see. But in the cataloging class that I took at IUPUI, we were trained to catalog with spaces. So that it rendered a certain way in the OPAC. Well, no, uh, so, I think it's more, so it renders, you see the de designation between the, the subfield and the actual field in a printed format. I see. Exactly, but, but some of it may also be if, you're talking about the leading space. I'm talking about the ending space. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 The leading space. Yes. It's the leading space is really the major issue. Is about readability for catalogers. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, and machines. Yeah. Because machines are expecting. Machines are not expecting the space. Right. They're not expecting the space. Yeah. I was going to say the, the space is there for readability of catalogers. The lack of a space is for readability of a machine. This really yeah. sounds like something is just busted between the flat text editor and the regular mark edit because I don't remember this being a problem and we've been using the flat text editor for a long time now so I think Sarah I might think be right. I think it is a bug that was introduced in the last version um, or or the last update <laughs> with whatever version. The update uh, to 3.4? Yeah. As I say um, because this was not an issue with 3.2. No, but um, I will get with Bob to see if we can run out um, mark fields that actually have the, I mean, because we really need to get that space out of every mark field, not just like the 245 or subject heading. Right. We need to get that original. Um, I will get with Bob. Because the, the spaces aren't just at the beginning and just at the end. No. So like for the 650 it could be after the a after the x after right. the v and it's like and then especially yeah with after the, the tabs it's yeah just crazy <laughs> so yeah. i will get with bob um he's much better at sql than i am so we could actually run up a list of um mark records that actually have that extra space in there somewhere um i'm not saying it'll be in every field or just one or two fields but uh I will get with Bob to see about getting a list of mark records that have that space in there. Um, it may take him or even take him a while to run up that list. Um, but you're talking so about automatically stripping them, I hope, because I suspect that there are more than a few. Well, see, we can't just automatically strip all spaces because spaces no, are but important. You can't but, automatically strip between a tag and a no. character. Right. So what we'll do is we'll run up a list of which was so we could see what we're having to see actually how big the problem is. Um, then we'll run up a way to strip those spaces out. Um, and it might be worth posting on the list of um, something, especially for people who are using the flat text editor to then like double check in the mark edit to look for spacing issues. Um, when they're done with the record, because I really think that's got to be where the issues coming from. And I used to use bookware. You used to be able to like copy and paste into the flat text editor, you know, well, I, very I easily. Use, I use bookware all the time and I do copy and paste it and, and it doesn't make spaces okay. when I do it. So, and, but I will say most of these are newer records and I, I usually I, find them. I usually find them when I'm doing an on-order record or something that's been updated or something like that. It does sound like a cataloger mm -hmm. at some point that's working for a vendor is yeah. introducing those. <laughs> okay, Sometimes well. Sometimes it may be they coming from a particular vendor being either imported with um, Z3950 or Z3950 the batch at it. Or um, Vandalay. Vandalay. Mm. Okay, well, Lynn, um, if you and Bob would look into that. Uh, Christy, do oh. you want to send something to the list about it? 
I can. Do you want me to? Since you're the chair, it might be better coming from you. Okay. But... <laughs> okay. I will. I will do that. Um. And if and, you come across some in the wild, maybe send those database IDs so we can we can look and we can Bob can see more where the uh, record has been and yeah. and all that. We might be able to okay, isolate the next, it too. The next ones I come across, I'll send a, a help desk right. ticket with them Sorry, and then also to good. the committee. Yeah, that way we can all look at them and we can figure out where the where the spaces are actually coming from because if they are actually from the original import then we can figure out okay they're coming from the original import and we can tell them to knock it off yeah like don't import from that source anymore no tell yeah. the source to stop putting spaces and so we can <laughs> import from them <laughs> and tell prospector to stop putting periods at the end of 300 field thank you <laughs> And the 337, 336, 337, 338. And uh -huh. at the end of their subfield twos. <laughs> um, um, I'll send any that I have too, because I find a decent amount while I'm cataloging and I just fix them. So if I run into any, I'll send them too. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's move on. Let's come back to the C and skip over and go to the local vocabulary. Um, the uh, Charles emailed about, um, we, I don't think that got put, is that a separate document that has our list of terms, um, Jocelyn or- Ruth, I think it's just know? in the ILS. I'll say I have to keep this, going back to that email that yeah. uh, was sent to <clears throat> find so Anna did all of this and I right. had a bit of a mea culpa because I was cleaning out my um, my computer and I found a draft about the illegal aliens heading that I was about to send out to everyone. Mm -hmm. But then I went and looked at what Anna did and I got stuck <laughs> Okay, because um, she did put them in there as headings, but I can't get them to validate the way she had them validated okay. in her sample records, but I don't know that that they do validate. They just don't validate the way that hers did. And I can't, she must have manually made them look the way she did. Like, I don't think they automatically did that. So I still need to send that out. Um, so that's, that's my fault for not getting that done. And I'm not blaming Anna, but she's the one who I had no I have no access to create the authority files or anything, but no, I don't think there is a document and I think there should be. Yeah, yeah there is not a document. Um, it has, it's in the thesaurus, the SORI configuration. I'm popping in here real quickly. Um, I'm gonna, do you mind if I share my screen real quick? to Keith, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. Pop over here. So let me actually get so I can see it. Sorry, my unmute button keeps jumping around. No, not at all. Go ahead. Okay. So this is actually something that's in the server administration and then um, the authority, the SORI, not that you need to see all this, but I do want to actually kind of show you what it does and I'm just going to sort the other way. So this is our local thesauri here for the, the genre headings. Pop in there. And of course, grid configuration on the fly is always fun. So let's save that. Um, let us go in here. Oh, and it just gives you a loop. Okay, so totally. this is completely unhelpful um, in terms of showing you, but this is where it is set up. But this is the only place where that information is right now, and it's obviously not very readily accessible. So, um, yes, a list of terms does need to be created and um, linked 
somewhere, somewheres. I suspect it needs to be linked more than one place. Right. I was especially thinking it'd be useful to have in the manual uh, for the subject headings chapter uh, mm -hmm. because I, I don't know what specifically it says, but something about I thought that, you know, we don't uh, we don't approve of local subject headings, but but these but are we the ones. Do. But yeah. but we do actually confer on them and establish uh, some local controlled vocabulary. Exactly. exactly. Local being consortial. And right, but we do. Some... The point is, we do talk about them first before. Uh, yeah, we don't just like yeah go willy nilly. I don't think we should put the vocabulary in the manual. Just a link to an outside. Right. Document. Right. Yes. Okay. Because okay. that's going to evolve over time, I imagine. Right. So I'm going okay. to stop this what share. Is, what is um, one of the words that, because I'm actually looking at the actual authorities and the authority file itself. It was undocumented uh, immigrants mm -hmm. was um, one of the subject headings. And then the genre forms was the LGBTQ Plus. IA plus. IA plus. And manga, wasn't there? A and manga. manga. Yeah, yeah, there is manga too. So there were like two genre headings and then one subject heading, but she had created the subject heading. So it had uh, see also let me references. Share my screen and I'll show you what's actually in the actual authority. So whoever has their screen shared, and can share it. Um, all right, you see this? I just went in, and this is actually, I'll show you how I got this. You go to cataloging. Oh, manage authorities, down, yeah. Manage authorities, that's where manage authorities is at. Um, this interface, just FYI, is being angularized in 3.7. It will not be the dojo. This is the dojo. So you actually have the different authority types. You have author, subject, title, topic. Right. Um, so undocumented and so you have undocumented immigrant children these are and you can see why see where it says control set egin so these are definitely the mm -hmm. um, the ones that anna added and you can edit these well you can edit them i don't yeah, know that no yeah, I don't. Not that's definitely a permission level them. thing. <laughs> right. right, but um, you can view them, maybe. You can view them. Um, but you can see that this is, uh, um, this is what I said, and, and actually there is a six sixty seven in there, approved by the Cadillac Community twenty twenty oh nine. So Jocelyn, you were saying that these are not working they, as expected. They validate, but they didn't validate in the way she had them in some of her, she had already gone in and put these in some records. So you can do a subject search for them. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went to like, I can't get them to validate with the subfields O that she had, it will validate. Okay. But it's not obvious that it's a local Oh, that it's and a local thesaurus. she was trying thesauri. to make it look like it was uh, more obvious that it was a local thesaurus because she had like an EGIN before the parentheses with the identifier. And I can't get it to do that. Hmm. I say, because they kind of do that anyway. I mean, every, all of them do. So yeah, these were the ones she had. Um, these look familiar to me. So if you go to the mark view or mark edit, see she's got that little EGIN in parentheses. Mm -hmm. Can you actually go to the mark edit, Lynn? The mark edit screen. And in the mark editor, the enhanced editor, rather than the flat text. And can you click on one of those links there, the, the validation links? Oh, 
Okay. Choose one of the ones that we're looking at. Right. Probably copy paste the the authority number and or no nope, sorry, you got number. So if you hit apply here. See, it just says that. That's what it looks like. If you put that um, subject heading in a new record and just leave it alone and let Evergreen authorize it, it looks like that, which is not what her example looked like. Mm -hmm. Her example looked more like this right here. Yes. And I can't tell if she manually made it look that way or if I'm missing something. So it validates. I mean, it can exist like this. Right. It's just unexpected. But it's, I think, kind of a little confusing. I think it warrants maybe further discussion on that and a little bit more investigation because we don't know. Yeah. We don't know what she did. It no, was one of those things. Yeah, because I think she typed this in. That in. That's the only thing I can think. But like expecting people to remember to do that is not going to not happen. Not going to happen. Yeah, and shouldn't happen. I mean, it, it it shouldn't have to happen. Yeah, that's definitely typed in. Otherwise, they would be the same. Yeah. Because that should well, that be like what I I ran up against, and then I completely forgot all about it until. Charles so it's just giving you the authorization number, but without the right. EGIN. Okay, I see. So all of the stuff is in there. It's just, it's not working the way it's I described. thought it was. Right. And it wasn't working the way it looked like she got it to work. And I was getting frustrated because I couldn't mm -hmm. figure it out. Anna had a, well, I've seen several things Anna did that she just made look pretty. <laughs> yeah and that's the only thing I could think of is that she did that manually but that she knew that that wasn't a solution unless she just kind of was working on it and gave up and I was gonna say I, I think that she probably was because that's a that's a coding issue and, and I think that in lieu of having the ability to code, she was working on this record. She saw that it didn't pr really provide enough context. And so she went back and she added the context as opposed to adding the mechanism to provide the context. Yeah, because I would have, I mean. Because she would have done the authority. She would have looked at it and she would have said oh that doesn't really tell people what they need to know so let's do this so that's the way i would have looking at the actual what's here mm -hmm. in the authority files itself the control set is egin can you make that happen lynn yeah is that something it, obviously it should be able to pull from that because it's doing that with the other authorities it's pulling the name of the thesaurus mm -hmm. and then followed by the um, id number for the authority file I wonder if that isn't the th the source code, perhaps. No, the the number that that. No, no, that no. Is, the, okay. the 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 open parenthesis DLC close parenthesis sh. Right. That that be like a fund code. There's a fund name and then a code associated with it, and then whatever IDs get us generated are different. The number is the ID. Yeah. I have a stupid I, again, she said Go for it, it Britta. So um, our, um, for our local headings, we have the EGIN on the authorized, uh, headings that we got back from our card, they have the EG slash IN. Is that deliberate to keep our local headings separate from the archive one? We don't know or the answer to that. Okay. The thing is, we do want to be able to find these, um, things that we have created on our own that aren't, mm -hmm. we want to be able to go back because if they ever do change the the subject headings to more appropriate language. We want to be able to find all of our records that have that and and, and get rid of those. yeah. And I would like to be able to know everything that has a subject heading from our local locally defined ones. Um, I think we might want that in the future. So we do want them to look different a little bit from 
what Marquette gives us. Um, I'll do I'll do some searching. I'm sure Lynn will do some searching as well. And we'll talk about it. Might it might be something just when she set it up that something you have to do for that control set name. Mm -hmm. That's that, what I was thinking that maybe something in the control set itself. Yeah. Same Z's. Since they're in the thesaurus now, I don't know if we need the because in the, the in the field 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 email she has um, E G I N G. I assume the G is um, for the thesaurus letter. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't when I was looking at what uh, was showing in the um, authority and then what the email I was getting confused and so I just and then Emma yeah. commented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the ones that she has on this particular record, there are no subfield twos. So yeah, I the don't one, know what she did. <laughs> could those have just been before she had put them in this um, thesaurus, so we so uh, um, catalogers would know not to delete them? I don't know. I wish I knew, Britta. <laughs> There's several things we wish we knew. Yeah, there there was not always continuity of information. Aren't subfield twos necessary if it has a second delimiter? Yes, and that's, yeah. that is another thing. That is, if it's second delimiter of seven, then it should have a corresponding two. So on this record that when I had shown, let me show it back. Find it. Um, currently, well, I just fixed this one. It was a subfield two. These are subfield sevens, but it doesn't have a subfield two. So these should be subfield zero. Well, second delimiter zero. Yes, because it is technically in our authority file. Right. Yeah. So it is an authorized heading. It's a local authorized heading. So we wouldn't need, but yeah. So when she fixed this record, she didn't fix it all the way. I'm gonna save this one. So then in turn, they could probably just see the 655 second tag zero and then the authorized. But we can't use a second indicator of zero, can we? Because that means it's an LCSH. And it's not. It was entered into our authority file using LCSH rules. So it's not an official Library of Congress subject heading, but we kind of fudged it to make it look like it was. Well, so, but do we want the mark record to code that? Because if somebody takes our record, it's not, it's incorrect. If someone uses our record through Z3950, that's, a, that's wrong. So should we use a subfield seven and I'm sorry, second indicator seven and a subfield two, or should we use a? We could even use a second indicator of four. Yeah, the second indicator of four is also possible. That I agree, it should alert that it's something we made up. See, technically, what it should be. Is this via subfield seven? And I'm gonna flip back just like text data because I can actually catalog in that much faster. And it should say a subfield two of EGIN, then a subfield, oh, there it goes, keeping spaces in there, zero. Let me go back to this. Text editor. Because what that means is here, oh, here it is. I should get seven. The subfield two means it's an evergreen Indiana subject heading. And this is its designation in the local authority file. If we use the subfield seven. Now, if we use the subfield four, then we don't need the subfield two here. Oof. 
we can just use just use like this one is this is subfield four and just have this subfield zero. So which way do I want to use it? Now, if we use the seven and put the subfield two in there, that way we have it designated as an EGIN and we don't have to worry about putting the EGIN in the subfield zero. We can leave it like that because the EGIN is in the subfield two. Would that mess up all of the others though? Well, I don't think there's many with these subject headings currently, so. No, and we're, no. What we can, I can do is I can, because um, Monica had initially sent us an article that had other universities that were doing this. I can go and peek into their catalogs and see if I can figure out how they made it work um, locally. Right. Because, I mean, We'd, I'd rather be consistent with. Um, Charles says this is just for subject headings, not the genre genre headings. I think it's actually for both. Right. Genre headings are a lot easier to deal with right. than the subject headings. I think that the reason this is trickier than the manga and the LGBTQ plus one is because it's a subject heading. And technically, Thesauri don't really deal with subjects. They just deal with genres. And um, so this one is a little different. Because we want to be able to use this undocumented immigrant children or undocumented immigrant set of authorities, subject authorities, correctly. So. Well, so Jocelyn, would you mind doing some homework and then writing up something and sending it to the committee and we can maybe approve it sure. via email or at the September meeting? Sure. And then once that's approved, then we can create a separate document as a reference sheet. Yes, we definitely do need a document and we need to be able to know what we're doing with I agree with um, toying around with the authority file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, we need to make sure that if we ever, if we ever lose the authority file, not that we will, um, we know authorities which store these the guys we go back in. Well, and people who are cataloging also need to know what has been approved so they can use them. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, thank you, Jocelyn. <laughs> for not doing what I was supposed to do. <laughs> for volunteering to do some more. And uh, thank you, Lynn, for your help. Um, annual conference. Ruth, Keith, I don't know what you guys wanted to say about that. It's kind of been said. I'm going to send out a call for proposals on, on Monday. There will be um, different categories that people can select they want to propose presentations or, or courses for, um, cataloging being one of them. And yeah, I think that there's gonna be room for, I think we talked about 12 sessions throughout the course of, of the one day conference and there should be some good options. If and, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it might be worth mentioning that the, um, cataloging refresher course that's at the annual conference does count for the um, annual training requirement to maintain uh, cat one status. Yeah, that's the nature of the refresher. That's, you know, you, you all know that. Um, but it's something that we want to, we, we've been doing a lot more work with um, auditing cat one accounts. So that's a point that we want to make to folks mm -hmm. is that because a lot of folks need a you know, they they look at that requirement. And they say, "Well, I, you know, I just took the advanced cataloging training, you know, two years ago. Do I really need to take the advanced cataloging training again?" And really, you don't. You just no, you don't. <laughs> Please so, don't. So this this is mostly because a lot of the cataloging, uh, you know, folks on the cataloging committee 
your kind of local regional contacts or people in your area. So if anybody reaches out to you um, with questions about that, that is that is a possibility uh, for folks who are looking to maintain their cat one status here. And it's free and it will be in person, yep. um, which we haven't had for a, a long time. And you'll get food. Yes. Um, Ruth, mm -hmm. when you don't get enough proposals. I am going to get enough proposals, Monica, but in the very slim possibility that I don't. When are continue. you uh, the cataloging in the past, the cataloging committee has taken has taken on the, the lion's share of training. Yes. 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 Um, so I assume that if and when you don't get enough things that you are going to contact the committee about doing something. Can do you have a timeline? Yes. So be? I'm going to take uh, proposals through the end of June and that next week when I potentially don't have enough, um, then I will be pounding the pavement. Okay. Uh, that said, I would encourage all of you all who may have things that you want to present to not wait for that. And if there is something that you feel passionate about and you want to share with the Evergreen Indiana community to respond to the request for proposals. Also, if you are not really into public speaking, but you have ideas, you can team up with someone. Yes. <clears throat> we'll find you someone. Just if or, you have an idea that you want someone else to present. No. Key. Nope. <laughs> nope. That is not going to be on that form. I, I second Keith. I was just about to say something to that effect. No <laughs> nominating because because other people. There might be ideas out there that aren't going to get done because this, the person with the idea will not do the presentation. So there, what there will be on there is a place to request a session on a specific topic but not to request a person right. specific to that topic because that's not fair to them. Right, no. Yeah. But so if, if someone but is yeah. doing something really interesting, but they are, will not present, well, then that, said, that idea can, is lost forever. We'll get them a buddy. Yeah. We'll so, get them a buddy. They're not going to volunteer, not pushing No, no. If that, that comes up and I know that. that somebody is working on that thing, I will approach them directly. <laughs> And Ruth, this is Mary Kay. Hi, Mary. <clears throat> Hi. Um, I am flatlining right now because I've had a branch manager leave. So sure. any fresh ideas I have are currently sitting on the curb with sure. the dumpster waiting for them to come um, yeah. pick up. So if you need someone to do a presentation on an idea, say you have someone who's reluctant to present but really wants to know about whatever cataloging topic. I can shuttle I can content to you and you'll, pre you'll present it. I'll do my darn best. Okay. So you can recruit me. Okay. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying to go out with a bang. You know, we only have 18 months left. I, I knew you were getting down. I'm Dad getting there. Gone it. I do not feel like that came before the committee. <laughs> we did not approve well, that. I have other things to bring before the committee because, you know, I want to, I've, I've talked about dabbling with the smaller evergreen libraries as a cataloging consultant um the places the the one person libraries and <clears throat> doing that during my retirement helping them understand some of the nuances of evergreen cataloging working with awesome the people who are cat one in name only and trying to give them some some added expertise backbone to just jump in and try it so but that's later that's, that's a discussion for another day mm -hmm. that's awesome. thank you for for offering as well for for the conference so but yes uh, i'm not nothing is going to be languishing in terms of uh, filling up those session offerings for people okay Anything else about the conference? Did I mention it's free and there'll be food? You did. You also said it would okay. be in person. It will be in person. Yes. Okay. Uh, officer elections. I nominate Monica. For what? Our chair. 
The date of the conference is Second. August the 26th, Kayla. You do such a good job, Monica. You're very thorough. <laughs> Thanks. I second that. The thoroughness or the, the nomination? <laughs> I was going to ask. <laughs> I, I second the motion. Is there anybody okay. else that is interested and would like to either nominate someone else or themselves? I don't know. You know, I gotta have, open it up. It's a committee. I move the nominations be closed. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're going to retire in 18 months doesn't mean you get to get away with whatever you want. Yes, it does. It kind of does. You said you wanted to go out with a bang, Mary Kay. Maybe, maybe uh, chairing a committee is how you do that. Um, no, I'm already on the county <laughs> health board and, and you know COVID. So thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> Monica, are you okay with being chair again? Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Monica. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. You're welcome. Uh, would anyone like to nominate anyone for secretary? I nominate Sandra. Thank you. If, 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 <laughs> anyone ha if anyone has a burning desire to be secretary, you know, don't let me stand in your way. Yes. Well, are, are any Joss of our Lund. new members interested? I don't think I can. I'm really just a consultant to you guys. I'm That's not an really excuse. A member of the committee, we, so you know. We could probably change that. <laughs> well, I think that you're probably right. <laughs> I'm not uh -oh. actually sure that we can. <laughs> It's uh, required admitting, yeah, amending the bylaws, I believe, requires two thirds of the member libraries to uh, approve it. So, if it makes it easier to find a secretary, I think all the members will, will back it. <laughs> uh, okay, is anyone else interested in uh, being secretary? Or Sandra, are you? Are and you Sandra working? has not expressed that she will not continue. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Sandra, yeah. are, are you willing to continue? I, I am willing to continue, yes. Okay. okay. But it's always, if someone else wants to do it, I would be willing to give it up to. Right. Uh, any other idea, uh, uh, volunteers? Going once, going twice? <laughs> Do we need to vote since we're both going to continue? Did someone move for? We... Uh, Britta moved for both of us because uh, Br Britta uh, nominated both of us, I guess. Oh, oh okay. Do I voted to really put out of the, the, the nomination for chair and secretary. There does still need to be a vote, even though you are continuing, yes. Okay, so. Uh, should you, should you, you or Keith run that vote? It's not me. He's the coordinator. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm super fine with it. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have uh, one nominee for uh, the chairperson of the board, uh, Monica Boyer. Uh, if you would like to cast your vote to retain Monica as the uh, chair, uh, please raise your hand or vote aye. 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 All right. Uh, Aye. Any opposed, please vote nay. I see no nays. I see no nays, even from the horses. Uh, nope. So Monica, congratulations on your Yay. appointment as, as chair here. Uh, same for Sandra here. Uh, we have a nomination uh, for to retain um, Sandra Osborne as the uh, secretary for the cataloging committee. Uh, all in favor, please vote aye. 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 <laughs> all opposed, please vote nay. <laughs> also no nays. All right, we have unanimous, unanimous votes. No recounts <laughs> needed here. Congratulations, Sandra. And thank you again for both you, Sandra and Monica for your work and willingness here to shoulder the extra burdens here. Sandra does all the work. I just talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I, I skipped over C because I feel like that's going to be a conversation and I know our meeting is running long. So I am willing to stay and discuss C, but if somebody, if, if you guys want to get out of here, I thought that that's something that 
we can probably table till the next meeting. Um, yeah, I'm too hungry to talk about that. Say, and if we, <laughs> we do table it, I do yep. want to say a little thing about parts that doesn't require a vote or anything, but but okay. that's if we table it. Otherwise, I would stay and talk. Okay. Um, anybody have, uh, we, Jocelyn is not a member as she reminded us only moments ago. So her opinion doesn't really count. Well, so. I'm the one who brought it up because a poor cataloger in the community came to me with this issue. Well, and no, then I, I ran it by two that. different, two different people on the committee and got two different answers. I'm just, oh, <laughs> I'm just saying, Jocelyn, that your your lunch is not a factor because you're not a committee member. <laughs> I'm fine with the majority. Um, if it that helps hurts. get things straightened out, then I'm fine with it. Then I'll go with majority if, if people want to. I, I don't know that it's super pressing, but I do think it's something we need to discuss. And um, we might need some more specific documentation related to it. It's something that you could theoretically discuss via listservs if you wanted to in the intervening time. That is a possibility. No, this no. is a this is a <laughs> drag it down. That would be too too confusing and take too much time to email. <laughs> I don't I appreciate the, the, the offer. Just wanted to throw no. that out there as a possibility. <laughs> if no, um, as I say we just plow through it because then we have to wait another three months. I I would agree with that. Does anybody does anybody disagree does any, does anybody want to make a motion to table uh i'm not seeing anything so i guess we're going to discuss it i can move to table this is mary Kay. Oh, oh. charles just moved to table so i'll second him oh okay um okay so do uh there's nothing to stop you though also from calling it a an intervening cataloging committee meeting between to discuss a specific topic if you want to do it before the next it just needs to be advertised to the community okay um in that case can um there's a motion on the table on the table to table the um the movie combo pack records um all in favor of tabling that say aye 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 uh so we have what four eyes five yeah, i don't I call you names <laughs> <laughs> no i was just trying to come up with a joke too uh all in favor uh, all not in favor of tabling say aye say nay right nay yes but i'm saying not in favor so it's aye <laughs> can i have stank i don't care either way but i do kind of want to do it but i also okay. don't okay i'll how this part works. i'll i'll change my vote to i nay. can do it to nay let's just do it you guys let's just let's I just think, i think do it. so we've got I feel like the solution is probably pretty easy. But... Well, but I, th I think it's going to take some discussion. Sure. Uh, so I do not, does any, does Sandra, uh, our wonderful secretary, do you know whether eyes or nays won? Well, I see three eyes and I see from Kayla, Charlie, and Lauren to table. Emma, I think, also voted to table. Yes four votes to table and who wants to discuss say your name monica monica britta yeah josephine, josephine is in there as well josephine and Denver. i'll put my i'll put my name down for sandra who else so it's ty oh good lord charles <laughs> This has never happened before. <laughs> so who else wants to be secretary? What you say, okay. I said, can I just change my vote to make it not a tie and let's just go ahead and take care of it now? Uh, that sounds like a plan. Okay. 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 Thank you, Lauren. Okay. All right. We ha Yeah, we have enough votes to discuss it, I think. I guess. Okay. I don't know. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, sure. Lauren. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so first of all, Lauren, I, I put you on here because you emailed me like last week about combo pack records. And I said that we were going to bring them up at the meeting, but I don't remember what your question was specifically. All right, so first of all, my internet connection has been a little strange. So if I suddenly drop out, I apologize and I'll go into text chat. But uh, basically Mary had asked me um, why, um, she mostly was curious like why the, the movie uh, Minari was showing up as a DVD and then DVD combo pack separately and um, she asked if they were ever going to get merged. And um, because of that, I, I was trying to explain it well, the DVDs that you see here, they came separately from the combo pack. But then she was like, but wasn't the whole original proposal going to be that if a DVD and a combo pack match, they would eventually be merged into one record. And my response was, that was so long ago, I don't remember. So that's, that's why I came to you, Monica, because I wasn't sure. And I think that's kind of where the issue that came to me came from, is that there's at least two libraries that thought it would be okay to put their 4K disc on the combo pack record. And in all honesty, that kind of seemed to be where Anna was wanting us to go. Uh, it is because of the very first, I actually pulled up the email, for her, the first email when she started doing it last summer and she sent a sample record and it has all three formats. Yeah. So, but when you read what's actually written in our procedure guides, it does not sound like you can do that. It sounds like it's a 4K combo pack would need to be a separate record. And then there would be a Blu-ray combo pack record. Oh, I didn't realize that it, that's what it sounded like. Because that's how they're packaged together. They're, pa they're not packaged together at all. You, 4K combo pack, you get a 4K and you get the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray combo pack, you get the Blu-ray and you get the DVD. Because he had been adding his 4Ks to the Blu-ray because his Blu-ray matches because he wants both of those Blu-rays to be on the same combo pack. But someone has been going back and removing the 4K reference to the 4K. Um. I personally feel like, yes, the 4K should be on there as well, as long as the Blu-ray matches. Um, maybe it's just a matter of rewording the procedures guide and sending an email to put everybody on the same page I mean is that what everyone else is that impression was that you could do that I I had to bring up my email that I sent to you Jocelyn that let's see, um agreed to adding a matching blu-ray from a 4k blu-ray combo pack to a blu-ray dvd combo pack is fine but I don't feel like we can add the 4k we're cataloging the combo pack as a whole because that's what the item is in part to allow us to do so. If we add a format that was not originally part of the combo pack, we're changing the item itself. If the combo pack is originally 4K Blu-ray DVDs, then they all can go on the same record. So in that, that, that was kind of my impression of because it was never issued with the 4K. The Blu-ray combo pack was never issued with the 4K. Why are we putting the 4K on that record? Well, but but we've done DVDs. If if they were issued separately, we're putting those on the combo pack. So if but, the uh, we're not, because her example of Minari, which is still in there, is that it's the DVDs just out on its own. Well, but it's supposed to be merged to if the DVD matches. It's supposed to be merged to the combo pack. If the was right. it not released as a combo pack? Uh, for the example of Minari, there is just the regular DVD, which has 68 copies on it. And then uh, this might just be a separate Blu-ray. So if, if the Blu-ray was only released as a Blu-ray, then they should be separate records. That's true. But what my second thing on the agenda was... <laughs> Or should we really be making this distinction with whether or not it was released um, as a combo pack? If, if that Minari record 
can't, the, the movie is the same, even though it wasn't relate, released as a combo pack, can't we put it all on the same record? I, I mean, shouldn't we? Is that something that the but committee would like to do? But if they, if they aren't released as a combo, I'm probably, I don't know, released as a combo pack originally, then we're changing the item itself. So maybe <laughs> is this a fervor thing where the work is Minari and maybe we should have a record for Minari, but for the movie, manifestations. Yes. And then um so yeah, the Minari is it's it's just a plain Blu-ray and then a plain DVD. There's no combo packs involved. Um, those are on the but they're on the same record that no they're okay. not okay so that that makes sense yeah but but if a <laughs> well i was going to say if we did change it so that the like it's the for example minari could both be on the same record then that would solve your blu-ray or your 4k problem too because the record could be for the movie and then you could put whatever format on the record and i think that would be easier for patrons because then they would just find the movie they want and they would select the format they need so yeah, go ahead jocelyn i i agree that i do think it's easier for patrons i think it's hell for catalogers and if people are stripping out i mean people have been stripping out his 4k information and not even telling you know not being like hey i just removed this because mm -hmm. he's not there are at least two institutions that are collecting 4k so it's not affecting just one um so i think there's a big disconnect with the combo packs i think there's always going to be a disconnect with the combo packs True story. Um, but i don't know what the answer is but i i did kind of get the impression that anna was wanting to get to a one record to encompass everything and i don't know that i feel great about that because I think it subverts a lot of our cataloging rules. Yeah. But on the other hand, I do think it is better for patrons. So I do want to throw this in here. So I pulled, I'm getting the parts report now that Anna was getting these things. And it's worth noting that there are a hundred and almost 5,000 records right now transiting records um, that do not have parts assigned and i'm referring to video discs that don't have parts assigned to them and while i do think there is definitely um value in a large project to deal with the 4k and things like that this other project is still has thousands upon thousands of records that have not been addressed yet and as part of that, then there are also 150,000 records that have things correctly, but there are just, again, thousands of others that need to have their parts actually fixed so that they're within the standards as they are documented. So, we're like 50% done with the parts project based on, on the, the numbers. I don't know, just, just some additional context there. What is happening? Which makes it sound very dramatic. <laughs> there has been a lot of work that has been done too. So, I mean, hundreds of thousands of records have been updated, um, but there are hundreds of thousands of records. I had to drop out for a bit, so I'm not 100% certain that I followed the conversation, but is this about the amount of like having just like the one record where like it has like multiple descriptor fields where it says like Blu-ray, DVD, stuff mm -hmm. like that? Because I, I I don't know that it takes away the cataloging role because you're still 
there's still space in the record to catalog the item in hand. It's you're just, just you're you're not like you are cataloging kind of the item in hand, but you might not have all of the parts. Like a lot of people aren't going to have the 4K, only a few libraries are collecting them. So if they're adding to that, I just think if a cataloger like Porter County comes on, this might be kind of a screwy rule. Like this might not make sense. And they are coming on, by the way. And they are coming on. Well, it's because like you said, nothing's going to make sense. There's not a perfect true. solution. It's another example of they need to run things by us and how they're going to package things when they produce them because it's, this is really difficult and it's just, it's very convoluted. Jocelyn, um, what two libraries have for, are carrying 4K? Lebanon and Alexandria Monroe are the two that I've seen. That, that, yeah, those are the two that I've seen as well, although I couldn't think of them off the top of my head. Do, do you know their preference? I know that Lebanon to contact me. It's uh, Josh Lewis. He's the head of their AV department. And he had been going in and putting in, um, you know, the, the 007. So the 4K icon would show up and, and the other 4K information. Um, and then he was noticing that someone else would go in and take them out. So then it didn't look like he had a 4K. Um, I think their preference, because he's not really a cataloger, he's their AV librarian, is to add it to the main record because they get, he gets all three formats. So I think for that library, because they do collect all three formats, that's easier for them to just have them all on one record. But that's just two libraries that I know of that are doing 4K. So that's not really an overwhelming. I am, I'm actually seeing one from Osgood right now as well. Okay. Um. So the alternative would be for him to make a 4K record for the combo pack, but he wants both of his Blu-ray from the 4K combo pack to serve with the Blu-ray from the Blu-ray combo pack because it's the same disc. So right. it can fulfill holds. Right. Uh, what does the committee think? I should do just a, a um, I guess, kind of a, um, a soft, just an idea of what the committee thinks. Can we vote on whether you think Blu-rays should be separate or not? Are, are 4K combo packs, do they usually just come as 4K Blu-ray or are they usually all three com uh, formats? I think it's a 4K and then the, reg the regular Blu-ray. Okay. I thought sometimes they had the DVD as well. It could be, they have all three. That's yeah, ridiculous, but. <laughs> yeah, and I might be wrong about that. But no, I, I, I think there have been some releases that do legit have all three formats in them. And a digital yeah, copy in my, too. In my really, really short time cataloging 4K, I do remember we had one that was like super special collector's edition that had all three formats. But normally it is just the 4K and, and the regular Blu-ray. I think it's the special edition that only has that has a DVD included. Okay. Thank you. I don't to know me, it, to me, it seems like that if if the Blu-ray is the same in the combo pack and the standalone and in the 4K, that it's kind of the unifying thing. And so the Blu-ray matches everything. So everything ought to be able to go on that record. And I have, I just, I have no really skin in this game since I don't get AV materials and I love it. I love it, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was just, it was because I know the cataloger at Lebanon and he contacted me about it. And and I, I do remember in the early days when we were separating out the combo packs because we didn't have parts. Um, so I don't have a preference one way or the other, but I, I do remember thinking that Anna was wanting us to get to a place where we're throwing everything on one record. And as a cataloger, I, I don't. Fuck. 
<laughs> now, see, the, and that's the other thing. You guys are saying how hard this is going to be for the cataloger, and you're right for the original cataloger. But look how easy it's going to be for all the copy catalogers. Not if people are removing the stuff that other people yeah. got put in because they don't understand. Well, no, that's true. But and people shouldn't you... be removing stuff that have other libraries items on them anyway. That's right. that's bad form and bad. Yeah. If, if people are removing stuff, yes, but if we set a policy that they all go on the same one and everybody is on the same page, it's going to be very simple for copy catalogers. Whoever does that first record, yes, it's going to be a pain, but after that, it's going to be pretty simple. Emma says, can't we create parts for 4K? And yes, the answer is uh, there would be, and there are and there parts are. for their 4K. Yeah. Um, it's just whether how the combo pack is recorded in the system and what goes on which record. If it's a 4K Blu-ray combo pack, where does essentially where does the Blu-ray go? Does it does it go with the 4K Blu-ray combo pack or does it go with the Blu-ray DVD combo? Bopac, assuming that they've both re been released, or is there one record that accounts for all of them? And then parts would be associated as they should be, depending on that. Do we need to mark it as a combo pack in the system if it's not yes. circulated? The part- You mean describe no. it as a combo pack? I And maybe this Sorry, I have my camera off because I've been eating. I didn't want you to have to watch me eat. Okay. Um, uh, I, maybe this is just confusion on my part because my library circulates everything individually. But if it's not being circulated as a combo pack, you know, if we're not circulating it as check out the DVD, the Blu-ray and the 4K all together, does the record really need to specify that it was obtained from a combo pack? Because I, I would think so long as the information on the record that says, this is what's on the DVD, this is what's on the Blu-ray, and this is what's on the 4K. And that's the discussion. Yeah, I, 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 guess, I, I, I guess I would say the only, I would think the only time it would need to be expressly cataloged as a combo pack is if it's being circulated as come check out all three of these things together. But even then we could potentially create a part. Well, and we do, we do we create do. a part. You, for we combo have a pack. combo pack part okay. and then we, you can split it out into DVD, Blu-ray. Okay. So I, I, I might be confused yeah. because of the way that my library does it. Well, and that's part of the thing is that there are a lot of libraries are doing these things differently and it is confusing. And people are bringing in records from other places. It could be that no one was intentionally deleting that information. It could be someone just overlaid it with a record uh, from somewhere else true. and didn't notice that um, because everyone's doing this differently. So we should all come to the cataloging committee meetings. Sure. Because our, 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 our membership, uh, our attendance is dwindling and because we don't, not everybody knows what they think, should we have the committee think on this and either table it or do have a vote via email sometime in the next month or so on whether we think that all formats can go on the same record or whether 4Ks need to be on their own record or the combo pack issue. Is this something that we, we need to stew on a little bit? Yes, I do not want to vote on it today. <laughs> you don't get a vote. Oh, that's I'm true. That I don't want you guys voting on it today. You guys are hungry and- <laughs> so, I'm actually and, and to see if we even have quorum right now. Yeah, we're starting to lose quorum because people and, are dropping out like crazy. And Kayla has a good question. Could we call a special meeting to just discuss this topic? And I have a kind of a proposal along those lines too, that maybe at the annual conference, we have an interest group there yeah. where people can come together like and that. talk about this yeah. very specific issue. I would um, like people who aren't on the committee to, to be able to weigh in on this. Cause this is a big, this is a big thing. It is. Yeah, that's a good idea. 
okay, well then can I have a table, a, a motion to table this and we will discuss it either via email and or at the annual conference? Preferably both, probably. Or both. Yeah. yeah, yeah, let's do both. Because I think- I'm Setting a door. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Uh, after this discussion, I will motion to table um, for further discussion as we Later. choose fit. Okay. I, sorry, who seconded? That was, that was Lauren. Lauren, okay. Uh, but if we don't have a quorum, I guess we can't have a vote. Is that right? Uh, well, I think we still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. We're good. Right vote. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then all in favor of tabling and discussing at a later time or place. Aye. 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 The thing is, we weren't going to be able to leave. I mean, you got to like, actually. <laughs> we have to stay if we don't have a quorum. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, so that will be tabled, and we'll discuss that later. But I am glad we talked. We started talking about it. I, I am glad, too. too. Yes. Um, OK. Uh, is there any other thing, anything else that we need to discuss before we adjourn, um, or any other questions? I have just a note that related to parts, I'm pulling that all apart, going through that huge data set. I'll be putting buckets together um, and doing some initial maintenance, and then I'll send an email out uh, so that we can hopefully kind of jumpstart that again to get some more progress on, on the original parts project. Good. I, that, that's, that's good. Because as Sarah mentioned in the chat, there's people who aren't putting parts even on their new items, okay. let alone their old items. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there, oh, this might be overreaching. Are we able to help other libraries add parts to their stuff? We don't have permissions to edit their items. I would love to do that, but we don't have permissions to edit their items. In some cases, I may or may not have done some little teeny tweaks. <laughs> well, yeah, but you're a state library person. Yes, I know. <laughs> but but if there if there is an issue, I guess at this point that you're noticing, let me know and I'll see what the possibilities are. I guess. Because I mean, like I mean, I would be willing to me or my staff to you know, go through and add parts to individual items that it's quite obvious, but, but we don't have the permissions. Yeah. To yeah. There has, there has to be a mechanism to get that permission. And then what does that actually mean? So technically it's good that we don't have that, but it yes. helps to assist yeah. every once in a while if people needed the help. And that's part of what I'm looking at, uh, what the patterns are, and then it will be part of that um, email. Okay, um, anything else? Motion to adjourn? Oh, Kayla, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank Kayla you, Kayla. Lauren will second that. <laughs> All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, okay, so we are adjourned. Um, we will be in touch and see each other probably at the conference. The conference Thank yeah. you, everyone. Yes, Next meeting, you. I believe, will be September 2nd. And I think we're going to start trying to do it in person again. Um, okay. If Sarah and Charles are here, I think we usually we do those at the Hussey Mayfield Public Library. Um, do you guys know if your meeting rooms are currently, are, are, will they be open, do you think, by September 2nd to be able to plan on having a meeting there? So um, I, I think they will be open by then. And even if they're not, we're using them for staff purposes. So we could we could do this. OK. okay. Uh, can I book that through uh, um, your website here, just to get that um, up here? Thank I you, don't Kayla. know if the, if the booking probably isn't open because they're not currently open, but I can book it. OK. Yeah, if, you, if I can do the, the back channel booking there, that would be key. <laughs> sure. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.